So the other day I was working on some rebar steaks. I was making about six of them, nothing too intensive. But as I was hammering that out, this happened. The hammer had broke off the handle of my Swedish hammer here. And it was a pretty clean break. I'll show you some pictures. I didn't think to roll any video at the time, but I ended up uh, burning out the haft in the forge. I didn't get it hot enough to damage the heat treatment on the head itself. But I burned, burned the remaining handle that was in there and then uh, punched it out and went to my local hardware store got a new replacement handle this is a lynx handle usa made nothing special about it okay so as it is right now this is going to be just a little big uh, especially on the sides so i'm going to whittle that down The name of the game for fitting this is wherever there are uh, black spots like this, just whittle that down. That lets you know where the handle is rubbing on the head. So. so as I do this, I try to start from well beyond where I know I need to remove material. Now one thing you do run the risk of doing when you're kind of whittling like this is you can basically make this into a uh, steak where you have too much of a taper so the head will be on there but then when it comes out the top of the hammer or your axe it's uh, just too narrow and it's not filling up that entire eye so to try and keep that from happening, I like to use a uh, rasp. This is a round rasp. So I'm really going to focus more on the the sides here rather than the, the ends. All right, we are almost, almost there. Okay, I think that's a good fit. Okay, so one thing I do like about that old uh, handle that came with the pending hoss here is that it's, it's a little bit narrower in the width. You see how this is, this one's just a little bit more rounded? This one sort of is narrow where there's a swell, then it narrows down again. This was a really comfortable handle. I really liked working with this one. Um, this one, it's narrow and then it just sort of swells up right here. So I'm gonna maybe see if I can take down some of the sides in here just to make this a little more comfortable. It's not a bad handle, you know, it's this one has worked out great for me. I'm just going to try and narrow this one up a bit just to make it feel as, as comfortable as this one. And using the knife edge here, this kind of smooths up all those chatter marks from the round rasp. So now just as an added bonus, to make this a little more Viking, I'm going to carve my uh, Viking inspired uh, traction grooves on there. Put a little V notch, just to give the file somewhere to bite. So it's not just skating around all the places. And then just walk that around. Okay. 
Okay, I got the grooves all cut in, and I'm just gonna sand this up right quick. Okay, so here's the uh, the metal wedge and the wooden wedge that came with the handle, and I'm I actually salvaged the original wedge that came with it, one of these uh, round ones here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna use this one. What the hell? Um, but I am gonna have to cut this wedge. Actually, the wedge is about the right size. So okay, so I'm gonna get this wedge going in here and hammer that in. Okay, so I got that fit. Now to make a hammer, of course you need a hammer. There you go, that is definitely not the best job, but... That's something. Alright, now it's time to set the wedge. Alright, now that is ugly as sin. As long as it stays on there, I'll be happy. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do just to really make sure that this head is not coming off of there is uh, I'm going to soak that head in uh, linseed oil. And yes, this is raw linseed oil. This is not the uh, boiled stuff. I do prefer to use the raw, even though it takes longer to dry. So I've got a uh, coffee can here. Black Silk, the choice of Black Art Forge. And this seems to fit the head pretty good. So I'm gonna fill this up. I'm gonna try and get it above the uh, above the head there. Let's see if I don't run out of linseed oil first. Okay, so I had to use it all up. So what's gonna happen now is the, uh, the end grain is just gonna soak it up from the bottom and hopefully from the top. So that way, that head is never coming off there. Now that trick I picked up from one of uh, Wayne Goddard's book. I can't remember if it was the, uh, the $50 knife shop or the wonder of knife making, but uh, give credit where credit's due. I got this from uh, Wayne Goddard. And that is what I did for uh, this handle. And yeah, this thing has never come loose. It's as, rock, it's as solid as the day that uh, I took it out of the linseed. So. Uh, I think he says to let it soak for about a month. I don't really want to give it that much time. So I'll probably just let it soak for about a week or so. And I got a little hole cut out in the top there just to hopefully slow down the evaporation process. Probably wrap that in some saran wrap or something like that just to try and lock all that in and keep it from all evaporating away. And then why not? Just a little bit of duct tape. For good measure. So what will happen to that linseed uh, if you leave it in the open is the top will just sort of uh, start to harden up. And I really don't want to waste all of my linseed oil. I want to be able to reuse it for, uh, for other projects. Okay, so there's the finished hammer. You can see I've been uh, using this quite a bit. It's solid as a rock, it hasn't come off yet. So you can see how the wood has just soaked up all that linseed and expanded around the, the wedge there. So there's no risk of that coming off. So I think I put this handle on here in, uh, it was either August or September of 2017. And now it's the beginning of March 2018. Uh, and this thing has been working out great. So no complaints there. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. And until next time, be more Viking.